All the time in our lives, we're constantly being bombarded with many, many different sounds. These could be a dog barking, someone talking to us, um, maybe a car alarm going off somewhere in the distance. And all of these sounds sort of sound different. They're not the same. We're able to tell what they are. The fact that we can tell that this is a car alarm and this is a dog barking is really interesting because we've obviously developed skills identifying sounds to help us make sense of our environment so we can tell that there is probably a dog nearby if we can hear a dog barking. Even though we're constantly surrounded by sounds and we're really good at identifying them, I wonder how often we actually think about how things sound. Well that's going to be the subject of the next few videos. How do things sound and how does that relate to music? We have a special name for when we're talking about how things sound and that special name is timbre, it's a French word. So whenever someone's talking about the timbre of a, of a violin or the timbre of an orchestra, they're trying to just sort of get beneath the surface of exactly the quality of the sound um, that that particular thing is making. So the different timbres being used in a piece of music can do a huge amount to define the sort of characters that it has and the sort of emotion that it's able to convey to us. And so um, it's probably very important to understand how we can get various different sounds if we want to compose music of our own. There's pretty much three main things that contribute to the timbre of a piece of music and we'll have a look at each of those right now. So I'd say the first and probably the most important thing to think about when we're trying to think more carefully and critically about the nature of sounds is to say, well, what is the thing making the sound? What is making the sound? That's the reason why we have lots and lots of different instruments, because if you know, you could get all the different timbres, all the different types of sound from one instrument, we'd only have one. And that would be a very boring world indeed if we only had one instrument. So let's just have a listen to a few instruments and, and, and compare their timbre and compare the qualities of sound that they have. So let's have a listen first of all to a very familiar sound and that is the piano. So the piano has a very recognisable timbre mainly because it's used a huge amount in lots of different styles of music and it's very easy to recognise um, by the way that the, the sound develops as it's being played. If we have a listen to that chord there, we'll hear that it has a very strong attack. So if we've got to imagine a piano, a piano plays its sound by having a hammer that hits a string. We'll have a look at this in due course. But um, the way that the sound happens is, is the hammer hits the string. And from that moment, the string is vibrating and slowly the sound will die away. So if we play a chord on the piano, eventually the sound will just disappear to nothing and so that's one of the qualities of, of a piano is that eventually any sound that you play on it will will end. Let's compare it to this organ sound which just carries on forever. It has a very sustained held timbre to it and it doesn't matter how long I play the note for we'll always keep getting that note because organs are normally powered by electronic bellows which means that air is constantly being blown through it. So it's very much like a flute or a recorder but just one that has a constant supply of air going through it. So I could keep holding that forever and it wouldn't stop. Let's try a different instrument. Say I wanted to produce a, a richer, fuller sound than an organ was able to create, I might need to find a string section, a section of string instruments. So that would be a collection of violins, violas, cellos and double basses, which sounds a little bit like this. And just like the organ, they're able to continue playing their instruments as well. They have a very sustained type of sound. As long as they don't get too tired or fall asleep, uh, a string section, string players can keep the sound on their instrument going and that's a very important part of their timbre. So when we're talking about timbre, one of the most important elements is what are the instruments being used to make the sounds. And there are hundreds if not thousands of different instruments that make slightly different sounds and it's huge amounts of fun learning about them all and learning about the different sounds that they're able to make. And when we as composers want to produce a certain musical effect, oftentimes we'll have a particular instrument in our minds. We might think, oh, we want a really mysterious sound, so we might use a cello because a cello does have a quite dark, mysterious timbre. 
But actually, each individual instrument is often capable of producing a really wide range of different sounds. So another question we have to ask is, how is the instrument being played? Staying with the string section for a moment, let's just think a little bit about the different ways that we could play, say, a violin or a viola. This is the more familiar, this is the sort of regular type of sound we'd expect to hear from a string instrument, and it's a very long, sustained sound. It's where the player is using the bow to create a sound by running the bow over the strings of the instrument, and they can keep a very long sound going by just changing the direction of the bow. And so, theoretically, they can keep that going for a very long time. But there are other things that you can do with a, a violin and a viola to produce different types of sounds. Take a listen to this, for example. So that sounds very different to when the string player was using the bow and this is a type of playing called pizzicato or plucking the instrument so instead of using the bow to make sounds on the instrument the player is pl plucking the string and um, which makes a very short very detached sound and there's other things as well i mean it, d it depends on how loud or how quietly someone's playing and it also depends on how short or how long the notes are that they're, that they're playing so another really important thing to remember is that every instrument has probably lots of different ways to be played just think about your voice, for example. In some ways, you can think about that as an instrument. It's capable of doing lots of different things. It can talk, it can sing, it can shout, it can make very, very quiet sounds. It can make very, very loud sounds. And it's a really important thing to remember that the way we play our instruments is sometimes just as important as the instruments themselves in creating this quality of sound or timbre. So another thing we need to think about is how are different sounds being combined together? Because one of the great things about music is we can take more than one instrument and put them together to make new combinations of different sounds. And it's actually quite rare for us to hear an instrument on its own. Sometimes we hear the piano being played on its own, but lots of different instruments composers tend to choose to put them together into interesting groups and so when we talk about instrumental groups or groups of singers we talk about ensembles and so another huge component of how music will sound is what sort of ensemble is playing it so if you imagine a just a single violin that's going to sound very very different to a whole string orchestra full of maybe 30 or 40 or 50 different string instruments all playing together. So for the next few videos we're going to get very well acquainted with some of the very common instruments that we tend to use and the sorts of sounds or timbres that they're capable of producing. We'll have a look at not only how those instruments work but also some of the special techniques or certain things that those instruments are particularly good at doing and also we'll have a look at how we put all these different instruments together into various different ensembles or bigger groups.